Former Hunter Biden business associate Tony Bobulinski giving closed-door testimony yesterday before the House Oversight and Judiciary Committees, claiming Joe Biden was at the center of the Biden family's overseas business dealings, raking in millions of dollars. Bobulinski telling lawmakers Joe Biden was the brand being sold to foreign clients, making it clear the Biden family business was Joe Biden, period. And I'm sorry, I can't hear what you're saying in my ear. Kellyanne is good. Okay, we do have her. I was afraid that we somehow were going to lose you, but here you are, Kellyanne Conway. Great to have you here. Uh, Bob Walensky, he's got you. a name you can't forget, but he might also have a story that is unforgettable, Kellyanne. No question. And when you get people under oath, the story is very different. Look, Joe Biden's never been under oath about any of this, Dana and Bill. When he lied to the American people in that debate against President Trump, when he said that he has never talked to his son about his business dealings and he feels sorry for him because he's a recovering drug addict and so on and so forth, he has said it under wing. He has said it to Fox News's Peter Ducey on several occasions. But when Bobulinski and before him Devin Archer, two former business associates of Hunter Biden, are under oath, they're telling the truth. I think what, what America needs to know about Bobulinski's testimony that's most important, from my view, is that he said that Joe Biden both was aware of this scheme, of this corrupt scheme, and also active in it. And the money that the Biden family themselves have realized from all this is in to the tune of about $15 million. Uh, look, Donald Trump's in courthouses, but Joe Biden's going to face the court of public opinion. And I believe part of why his disapproval rating continues to go up, that he has no goodwill on any of the personal attributes, has something to do with all of this. People want answers. I want to go back and look at his FEC disclosures. Did we know that Scranton Joe, Lunchbox Joe, was this wealthy? He has a right to make money out of his vice presidency and before his presidency. But the question is, did it come from countries that are in the news daily? Ukraine, China, maybe Russia. Mm. Here is part of that testimony. I just want to read this uh, quick clip here. I want to be crystal clear from my direct personal experience and what I've been subsequently come to learn. It is clear to me that Joe Biden was the brand being sold by the Biden family. His family's foreign influence peddling uh, operation from China to Ukraine and elsewhere sold out to foreign actors who were seeking to gain influence and access to Joe Biden in the United States government. Does he appear in a public hearing sometime soon, Kellyanne? I think it's very likely, Bill, because we do see all the work that's being done by Comer and Jordan and Smith. You've got a number of the Republicans in a very scaffolded together, tenuous, small majority. But this is why it matters. They're chairman of these committees that are actually now bearing fruit. And we need to hear from Tony Bobulinski. This is not Joe Biden's personal life. This is he decided to run for president after his family, his brother, his son himself were making millions Millions of dollars profiting from these business dealings. We know Joe Biden has very little energy, but we also know that Hunter Biden had very little energy experience. So how did he land on the board of Burisma Energy uh, to begin with? And this is important. I think it's important for another reason. Uh, we see now in the news all this stuff about the 26 Trump allies that were targeted in these by this ridiculous Russia collusion that cost the country $32 million in taxpayer money and so much angst. And we, we people were so hepped up on that for three years. We spent all this time and money looking for something that didn't exist. It turned an election. I think people need to know what Joe Biden and the, and the Biden family promised in return for all this money now that he's president. Kellyanne, while we have you, can we get your take on the loss for the Republicans last night in that New York three special election? Uh, would Mozzie Pillip be a good candidate to run again since that has to happen again this November. She would be a good candidate to run, Dana, if a couple things happen. If, A, she stops being wishy-washy on where she is on the leader of the party and the presumptive nominee, Donald Trump. If she wants to distance herself from him, she can. If she wants to embrace him, she can. But when you sit in the middle of the highway, you become political roadkill. And uh, these people who are told by their consultants, distance yourself from Trump, and then Trump somehow is to blame for it. You know what? Take advantage of the fact that he's going to have great enthusiasm, energy, dollars uh, that 
can redound to the benefit of other candidates. Also, I love that she's a Republican. She has an amazing biography. We all know it. We, those who don't know can pull it. But let me say this. If a bunch of guys are going to make you the nominee, they can't then hide you. She was constantly being sandwiched and bookended by these guys and hidden. The New York Times reported that Maisie Phillip had no one on her payroll. You have to run a real grown-up campaign. Swazi did two things that were smart the Republicans better learn from. Number one, early voting. He killed it by two to one, I think, in Queens and by 16 percent in Nassau County or vice versa. Uh, the weather yesterday in New York, where all three of us were, proves that this bank your vote early, getting that early vote and making Republican voters comfortable, center-right voters comfortable with voting early is incredibly important. Number two, Swazi, instead of lying, like every other Democrat seems to be doing these days, Mayorkas is doing a great job. There's no crisis at the border. The borders are. Kamala's wonderful. Biden's right. What did he do? He said, I better go against my party on the border. And he did it. Paid advertising, mailers, press conferences, public mm -hmm. appeals. So he has shown the Democrats how to run on the border. Um, I think the Republicans should do the same thing with abortion. Instead of being ostriches and pretending with their head in the sand, they should be peacocks and say, look, this is what it means to be pro-life in 2024. This is what it means to be pro-choice in 2024. And instead of hiding own it and message it. I think he did a great job on yeah. that, going against his party. Let's see how many Democrats follow suit. Okay, Kellyanne, uh, really interesting analysis, especially the early voting. We've yet to see whether or not the RNC can pull that off, and we shall see soon. All right, Kellyanne yes. Conway, we'll see you in person. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.